This is the new 2022 Arai RX7 Evo. Now hang on. No. This is the new 2022 RX7 Evo. No, I had it, I had it right the first time. This is the new 2022 Arai RX7 Evo. Now this really is the new Arai RX7 Evo, which is certified to the latest and much tougher EC2206 safety standard. And this is the Arai RX7V, which was the previous model introduced in 2015 and certified to the old EC2205 standard. And no cheating, while you see them both, comment below what the differences are besides the safety stickers on the back. Right, well the cheek pads are the new design that we've already seen on the new Quantic. And they push in at the back now rather than the, the front, so they fit differently. Uh, and these two vents, these are new. Now they're channeled to these side exhaust ports, so as you get low pressure here, as the wind kind of rushing past them, it draws the moist air from the inside of the visor away from it and out through the back. And that's it. Otherwise, the vents are all the same, including the, the scoops and the diffusers. And the multi-composite shell, that didn't have to be changed at all for the RX-7 to pass 2206. And nor did the inner EPS shell, that means expanded polystyrene. And that's unique to our eye, in that it's not made up of several separate parts. The line is still multi-density, like others from other brands, to deal with the different impacts of a crash and for comfort. But in Arrow's case, it's a one-piece construction. Now, that's harder and more expensive to make, but it's what Arrow's always done. Now, some people say Arrow's are old-fashioned because they never change. But Arrow says that it uses state-of-the-art techniques but sticks to its tradition of making what it thinks are the safest possible helmets. Arrow's always claimed that it made helmets that exceeded the standards, not just met them. And while some of the older models didn't do great in side impacts during sharp testing, they did improve, and the fact that the RX-7V, which is now seven years old, passed the much tougher EC2206 standard with no changes means there might be something in that. If we look quickly at the new safety standards, there's obviously a limit to how much energy any helmet can absorb, but unless you hit something dead square on, there's a potential to keep a hell of a lot of energy out of the lid and your head. And it does that if it can slide through an impact rather than coming to an abrupt stop, which is why it's now part of the Test method. An ECE 2205 saw helmets dropped onto a flat and a curb anvil at 16.8 miles an hour with a weighted head form inside. And that's still in 2206, but now there's an extra 12 impact points tested with high and low speed tests in there too. There's also a new oblique test to help protect the brain from twisting forces that can happen if your head's snapped around. And the peak rotational acceleration in that is 10,400 radians per second. Now in this clip, you can see how the helmet is spun as it hits that 45 degree angle, which is covered in a braise of paper to help it grab. And by the end of 2023, all helmets are gonna have to meet EC2206. That doesn't mean you can't wear a 2205 helmet. That's fine, it's just that's the standard that'll be coming in. Now, just like all the other Arai's, there's no drop down sun shield. And Arai has now admitted that it'd probably sell more helmets if it did fit them but it still believes that it's safer to have the combined structure of the strong outer shell and soft inner EPS, so keeping them always touching everywhere. Thing is, the Schubert C5 has a drop-down sunshield, and that does meet EC2306, but I say that its philosophy is to make the safest possible helmet with no compromises. Remember, any standards are a, a minimum requirement to meet. The thing is, though, obviously, this is where we have to take our eyes word for it, that it's better not to have that gap, as we don't know by how much difference the test results vary. It's gotta be your call. I wear helmets with and without sun shields. You can fit Arrow's Pro Shield, but I prefer to use a dark visor and carry a clear one with me. Um, but part of the reason actually is, because I wear glasses, if I use a drop down sun shield, I've got the plastic of my glasses, the plastic of a drop down sun shield, the plastic of the pin lock, and the plastic of the visor. When I wear a dark visor, that's always when it's lovely sunny weather, so, you know, it's warm and everything. 
So I don't bother with a pin lock in that. So I've just got my glasses and the single sheet of plastic. So I'm not reducing the clarity. And obviously I always carry that clear one in case the weather changes. Now the RX-7 is intercom ready. And Arrow says you can fit any brand you like because they don't have uh, an integrated uh, intercom manufacturer. Um, and there are sections of the foam in the cheek pads that can be removed to pop them in. Now the old one actually has the same bits in there that you can take out. And I, I have just removed this Cardo Pack Talk bold from it because I didn't want to give away which was a new one at the start. I've only put a couple of hundred miles on the RX-7 Evo so far, but it has been excellent. This Arrow is being promoted as a grand touring helmet now, but it's always been the flagship bracelet. It's got a reputation of being noisy, and maybe that was the case in the past, but even from the RX-7V, which obviously is basically the same, I wouldn't say that's the case, and it doesn't really seem any noisier than most others I've used. So, of course, if you open all these vents up, you'll get a rushing air sound, but it is designed to let as much cool air in as possible and shift as much warm, moist air out too. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six exhaust vents on, on this helmet, uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six intake ports. Oh, and of course, the, the new visor ports that draw the air out. I just realized I missed one, actually. There's another exhaust port here, so there's seven exhaust ports. The one thing I would warn you is that if you have these intakes fully open, not at the half setting, while they work incredibly well, they're also big enough for a horsefly to bullseye its way in there. Ask me in the comments how I know. Now this one weighs 1,568 grams on my scales, which is not heavy and it's not light. What really matters in any helmet is aerodynamics and there's no apparent drag when looking ahead or doing shoulder checks. It's very, very good. In fact, and I am, I am being totally honest here, the fit is incredible. Uh, obviously, that's subjective, it might not be for you, but because this is designed for the pressure of high speed on track, it fits perfectly snugly across my entire head, meaning it, it feels like, like it's part of my head. I mean, for me at least, it means I don't have any reminders that I've got the helmet on, like, you know, the odd bit of movement you sometimes get, or the tiniest pressure point that reminds you you're wearing it. It really is, an outstandingly well-fitted lid. But, you know, we've all got slightly different shed shapes, so you have to try one on. Obviously, this isn't a full review. I'll do a lot more miles in all weathers before that appears on bikesocial.co.uk website, but please do bookmark that page so you see the latest product and bike reviews, plus loads of advice and features as soon as we publish them. I don't do many product video reviews, as you can't update them if anything changes, but you'll find our reviews on the site. Oh, and Google, of course. And uh, can you do me a favor and like this video, assuming you do like it? The genes test I recently did shows just how much of a difference it really does make to the YouTube algorithm. So look, the Arai RX-7 Evo is basically the same helmet as the RX-7V, with the extra visor vents being the main change of interest. The point is that if you've just bought the RX-7V, you don't need to worry about upgrading. Equally, if you see a good price on one, and it's not been sat in the shops for seven years, then I'd probably snap it up. But if you're thinking of buying one, I would give it a try. Yes, it's the most expensive hour you can buy, with a recommended retail price starting at £699.99 for a plain clothes like this. It's also got stiff competition, even from Arai, with the Quantic starting at £499.99. The ventilation on that is just as good on the road, and maybe in some ways it's better but it's not as capable at very high speeds because it's got a more relaxed, but still very stable fit to it. You can feel it as soon as you put the Quantic on, it slips on your head really easily, but still then grips properly, but it's got a more relaxed opening, whereas this does feel more of the, like the, the proper full race potential fit. There is no reason why you wouldn't wear this touring or whatever you like. Personally, I'd probably say most riders should go for the Quantic if they want an Arai. But this is the flagship helmet and it's great to see it's now being certified as among the safest on the market.
Okay, let's slowly do the visor change because I know some people hate it. There are easier ones out there like Shoei, Shoebirth and HJC, but it doesn't take much practice to get used to it. Okay, so open the visor. You see these tabs on the side? I'm doing the same on the other side at the same time. Push those through. Now, because you've had the visor fully open, now as we bring it down, you can see how it pops into that red area there, and then it lifts away. Now to put it back, this is the critical bit. You must get that pin into that red zone there and then push carefully here, or push firmly, to make sure that the visor goes under the tabs. You won't break it, uh, but then as you do it, keep your finger, keep your pressure on that uh, brass bit. And there we go. Now it's locked into place. So then you put the side pod back on. Do the same on the other side. Check it. Check it opens smoothly, and that's it. It really is that simple. Finally, if you're struggling to open the visor from, uh, from locked down, you're meant to swipe up with your thumb, taking the lock with it, like that. Ah, <laughs> see, I can't do it there. It's easier when it's on your head. You swipe up with your thumb, taking the visor with it. It does become second nature when you're used to it, but I would say it's still a pain in the ass when you've got the clutch held in and you're trying to do it with your right hand.